How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're going to be creating this procedural logo reveal animation. It's all done with shader nodes and it's super, super fun. So we will get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of 200 ready to use procedural materials compatible with both Eevee and Cycles. Speeding up your workflow is important and with an easy system to apply and edit materials, you will be able to bring your renders to life a lot quicker. Change the roughness, details, and color of any material you want. There is a growing list of categories like wood materials, detailed paints, and some really awesome metallic materials. They are 100% procedural, so everything is editable, giving you control of how you want your design to look. All updates are free upon purchasing, so head over to duckey3d.com and check it out. All right, so this is the animation that we are gonna be creating. If you wanna get the project file for this, this will be on Patreon, um, except instead of the Nucky logo, it would probably just be a different piece of geometry. Um, I'm not partnered with, affiliated with, or sponsored by Nike. I just think it's a great logo to work with and show you kind of, this works on abstract shapes, not just like squares and circles and stuff. So it's really cool. Now, if you want to get the logo of something, if it's your own logo, whatever program you created your logo in, export it out as an SVG file, or you can go like, uh, and you can just search up Nike logo. Well, I didn't even spell that right. But Nike logo SVG, and you will find pretty much any logo as an SVG on the web. Um, but give credit, all that fun stuff. Or you can use geometry and you can use text because we are using, um, we're gonna be using this as shader nodes. So this really works on any shape you want. Of course, the idea is logos. That's why I'm using the Nike logo. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get a new file going. So we're just gonna take a new file and we are going to be using um, EV for this, so my default settings, make sure you click on all of these pieces here. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go and import my SVG. If you wanna go import, SVG, and then right here, Nike 4 logo SVG. Now, weird thing about SVGs is they're gonna be kinda weird. So you're gonna take this here and I'm gonna delete that. And this is puny, like if I just put one of these primitives in, it's pretty small. So what we first need to do is scale it up and I'm gonna hit the tilde key and go to the top. Let's go ahead and get our anchor point. The anchor point's here. And so what that means, if I go to rotate it, it's gonna rotate on that ridiculous anchor point. So you'll just go to hit tab for edit mode, hit A, and I'm gonna hit G and place my anchor point right there. Boom, we're done. So now when I rotate it, I'm hitting R to rotate. It's rotating on a proper axis. All right, so that's how you kind of deal with your logo. If you're importing your own logo as an SVG, it can be kind of hectic, um, but we're past that. <laughs> So let's go ahead. I'm going to go here to the material selection and kill that material. I'm going to hit RX90 on my logo. Scale it up a little bit. <clears throat> and then here, we're just going to click new. And very, very important. We are going to be de dealing with transparency. So all the way down here on the bottom where it says settings, we're going to go our blend mode to alpha blend. That's going to initiate the transparency node that we're going to use. Otherwise, it's not going to work properly. Now that we're done here, let's go ahead and get the shader nodes going. So we're gonna go click up here to the shader workspace. I'm gonna go ahead and collapse these windows. You'll just see the plus icon collapse it. That's my own preference. You can leave them up if you want. And then hit this drop down. I'm gonna take out my world opacity. All right, now we have this. So we need to do two things. Well, more than that, much more than that. But let's go ahead and delete this principled. And then I'm gonna hit shift A and get a mix. Shift A search, get a mix shader. And we're gonna plug two nodes into here. We're gonna get a transparency. So shift A, search T, R, A. Transparent, plug that on the bottom socket. Let's get an emission. Plug that emission to the top socket. Right up here, we're gonna get a map range. Now, I rarely use map range nodes here on the channel. And that's just because I am a visual learner. I prefer the color ramp because it's visual. Um, but this map range has a very cool feature that we're gonna use but this basically performs very similar to the color ramp where you're crunching in uh, values and stuff to make them sharper, or softer, or whatever. Um, but it's a lot more technical. Now let's get a gradient node. So GRA, gradient texture, plug the color into the value. And then if you have the Node Wrangler add on enabled, it comes with Blender by default. You just get to enable it, hit Control T. And I'm going to use this object coordinate. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to play 
Now what we can do is here in this X location, I'm holding down shift to make it kind of a smoother motion. But uh, where did it go? There it is. So now we can have this gradient. <clears throat> so I'm gonna show you the really cool feature on the map range node. So I'm actually bring my strength up a little bit, make it glow. So you see how it says linear? So if you play with this from max, it actually kind of moves it around. And you have from min, you can see how this, you can see how this um, gradient right here is getting sharper, which is similar to what color ramps typically are doing. But forgetting about that, here's the cool trick and why we're using map range. It says linear, go here to stepped linear. And then check this out. If I bring up my steps, it is making that gradient stepped where you can see these different steps going in. And it's so, 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 so cool. So you can bring in less steps to make it like that. Here on the emission color, of course you can make it like a blue, boom. Now you have a really cool logo and you can do this to any shape, any logo, whatever you apply the shader to. And it helps if the geometry is flat um, but it is not going to break your scene. Um, here in the official view, I'm gonna hit the world icon and just bring this down to black so we can just deal with that. But look how cool that is. And then if you play with your gradient texture, you can animate that in just like that. And that's how we're gonna be animating this. But we first need to throw a Voronoi texture on this. So what we're gonna do here on the vector line, we're gonna get a Voronoi. Voronoi texture, and we need to use distance. That's very important. And the distance is really what's going to create it. So I'm going to play with that X location. And this is similar to the logo animation we did a few weeks ago. Um, but in this case, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to bring my scale here to 22. And then from 3D, we got to go to 4D. And this is really just for preference. You can kind of play with that. And you can animate that if you want. Um, and then if you play with your gradient, it's going to still do some stuff. But we need to get one thing. We need to get a mix RGB and we're gonna plug the object coordinate here, and that's really gonna mix these two together. So it's gonna be like this, where it's just stepped gradient here, where it's completely affecting that. And what we're gonna do is just bring this over to here. Now we need to go ahead and get this map range to be what we want it to be. So steps, I'm gonna put it at three, and then here, I'm gonna put this at 0.1, and then if you go back here to your X location, it's going to animate in properly with those exact parameters. Um, applied, but playing with that X location animates this in and we're pretty much done. Now you can go ahead and just edit this however you want. I'm a big fan of yellow today and tomorrow I'll be a big fan of different color. <laughs> but you can go ahead and change parameters if you like. Like if you want this to look different, you can certainly change it. If you want to add more steps, you can. Now it looks soft and bubbly or you can give it less steps. You can really go in and change everything about this but this is how we're gonna be animating the logo itself. So with that being said, let's go ahead and animate it. Let's go ahead, right over here, you'll hit this plus icon, just drag it up, hit this drop down, and we're gonna get a timeline. So now we're ready. So however long I want my animation to last, but first off, we'll go here to edit, preferences, click on this animation tab, and then default interpolation, we need to set it to Bezier. It's gonna be there by default for you unless you've changed it, so just kind of double check. All right, now, Let's go ahead and hover over this guy. I'm gonna hit I to add a keyframe. And I'm just gonna press play and see how long do I want my animation to last? Right about here. And um, animate your parameter. I'm holding down shift to make sure it's slow and everything works. I'm gonna hit I once again. All right, now if I press play, animation is great. Now let's go ahead and create the scene around it because I don't just want to make a logo animation. I want you to have something to walk away with that is useful to you. So I'm going to go ahead and get a plane. I'm going to hit S5, Control A, Apply Scale. I'm going to hit Tab, right click, Subdivide, and we're going to go ahead and give this 100 subdivision. All right, now that we're done with that, let's go ahead and add a modifier to this, which is going to be a displacement modifier. Click New. Click this little button right here, and then we're gonna go from image and movie to clouds, bring depth to zero, bring your size pretty far up. I'm gonna right click, shade smooth. And I'm gonna bring my strength down a little bit. Now, let's go ahead and bring my logo up. Now, when we animate this, I do wanna have a portion that's right below this logo that kind of brings your eyes to the logo. Now we're gonna work on a little bit of composition. So, 
I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go and get in a curve circle. Go to, go to the curve settings here. And then I'm gonna bring my resolution and my render all the way up to 63. And then on depth, just give it a little bit of thickness. We're gonna put a emission material in that in a second, but you can see how it's eating into it right there. What we're gonna do is weight paint. We're gonna weight paint so that this portion right here is not affected by displacement. That's a really fun thing you can do to kind of control where the displacement is happening. But we need to do weight painting, and this is very, very easy. You don't need to know about weight painting to do this. So I'm gonna click on my plane on object mode, go to weight paint. All right, and for me, I'm gonna hit the tilde key and click top, so we're right above the top. And I want the weight paint to basically take the circumference of this portion. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna bring my radius up. It worked for me when it was past it. And then I'm just gonna click, 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 click. There we go, weight paint has worked. And then we're gonna go back to object mode, go to the uh, displacement, and right here in vertex group, we'll click that, click that group, and then we'll click the um, invert button. So now you can see no displacement affects that region. And then what we can do is we'll go back to weight paint and then maybe bring it up so that it affects it a little bit farther out. This is not an exact science here because the displacement is very random. All right, cool. So now the displacement is not overtaking my new circle. And when we animate it, it's not going to animate either. So if you watch, let's go ahead and get an empty this is going to control our animation. So we'll go here from coordinates from local to object. Object picked that empty. So if you click on the empty and I'm gonna hit R twice, you can see it animate, except for that portion with the weight paint. So it solidifies the region where this logo is and really plants it in the scene. And that's really, really cool. So what we're gonna do now is add a material to this guy here and this guy. So we'll go back here to shading. We're gonna have a little bit of fun and um, we'll minimize that timeline. I'm gonna click new. And then here in this principle, we're gonna go ahead and get a color ramp and a layer weight. I'm gonna plug Fresnel into the color ramp and I'm gonna plug the color into emission. All right, now let's go ahead and get a yellow color or whatever color you'd like it to be. And then we're gonna play with that for now. So if we play with the blend here and then crunch in the color ramp, I'm gonna go here to B spline to make it a much smoother transition. And then here in the emission, you can make it brighter. And look at that, how cool is that? And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do, all right, then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit um, Shift D on this, bring it up, and I'm gonna hit RX 180, and that's gonna flip it by 180. And now we have this. Let's go ahead and get a uh, camera. So I'm gonna hit the tilde key, which is right above the tab key. I'm gonna hit front and then get our camera. And the reason why we did that is wherever your viewport is facing, when you import your camera, your camera is gonna face that direction. So that just saves us some time for having to redirect the camera. So I'm gonna go here, maybe in the camera settings, I'm gonna bring my focal length back and then hit G and middle click to bring it in. Let's see how this looks. All right, it's looking pretty awesome here on this guy here in this ring we're going to give it an emission material so click new principle to emission we're going to go here to yellow maybe even make it a little bit thicker on the depth we really want to plant it in the scene and then here in the camera click on this little camera icon go all the way down here to color management on we'll go here to high contrast that's really gonna sell this. So if we just look, animates in, super cool. Let's go ahead and animate the displacement. So if you click on the empty here in your outline, again, if you hit R twice, you can just kind of test to see if it's all gonna work, and it will. You can click here, Y rotation. So click in here, go to here, and then just animate it like this. And then now we have a really cool logo reveal animation. And we're done. Now I'm just gonna show you how to export this and we'll be on our merry way. Um, we'll just go here to the printer icon. Here you can select your resolution. 1920 by 1080 is default. That's where I'm going to leave it. 
Down here, you can select where you want to save. If you were doing a PNG sequence, make a new folder and select that folder. But if you want Blender to compile a video for you, you don't have to edit it. Click on FFmpeg video, encoding, go to MP4, medium quality to perceptually lossless. And you go here to render, render animation and you'll be done. And by the end, you are going to have a very cool animation like this. So yeah, there you go. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned some stuff. Uh, be sure to check out Real Time Materials linked in the description and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.